know what happened yesterday for the people. Tell me what happened. Well, what? With the car. What if it wasn't me driving? What if it wasn't you? What if it was my mom's truck? Mm-hmm. But I wasn't driving. Yeah, so what do you call my shoulder? <laughs> I'm just making a joke. It's the audacity for me. Y'all, when I finally was able to get around to watching this interrogation, which took place obviously after his attack on the parade, knowing what we know now, having set through the trial, I was like, what am I watching? Hello everybody and welcome back to the damn sofa. That's the sofa behind me and our little doggy mascot is actually in the real bed right now. So the bear mascot, Mr. Roscoe, is holding it down on the sofa back there for us. And my name is Paul. Welcome to the sofa. We've saved a warm spot for you. Now today, like you saw, we're going to be going over this interrogation. If you've been following me for a while or for just this case, uh, then you'll know that things have been kind of busy. I'm in the middle of moving and today is the, or this video I should say is the last video with our little set that we're doing back here. Uh, I'm going to be breaking it down after I do this video um, because we're and we're moving the set today. So anyways, bear with me. It'll probably be a hot minute before I get back. Now that being said, this interrogation I've cut clips out. We're going to put them up. We're going to talk about them. I am going to try and do it in one video, but I'm looking at my timeline thing here and it's a ton of clips. So again, I might break it down into two we'll just see how it goes right uh so we're gonna just go through it and do that now as always thank you to everybody who makes this channel possible y'all would not be here without you thank you to the patreons the channel members and everybody here chatting in the comment section sharing liking interacting with the video and well me and roscoe i greatly appreciate it also Go ahead right now and drop some hearts, some sofas, some love for all of the victims and the survivors of this absolute monster, Darrell Brooks. With that being said, let's go ahead and look at the first clip. Okay, and um, it's paused right now, but um, who's in that room? Objection, leader. <laughs> Overruled. The person in that room in the red t-shirt with the mask partially covering their face, longer braided appearing hair, is Daryl Edward Brooks. The same individual sitting to my left in this suit, jacket, shorter hair, and surgical mask. Okay, now I know that was kind of a weird one to start off with, but we're laying the foundation. We're talking courtroom talk here. We're laying the foundation. Uh, no, but what I wanted to do is just, again, lay the foundation. So what's going on is in court, they have an officer, the investigating officer, who's there. They're breaking down this video in court, right? Apparently this interview was like several hours long. Okay, so one thing I wanted to show with that, because I've cut a lot of this out, it doesn't matter what the prosecution asks of this detective. Every single thing they say, Daryl will go, objection, leading. Like, that's his key word for this entire thing. And the judge, I think maybe of all that I saw twice, she actually listened to his thing. It was like, sustain, you know, rephrase your question or whatever. But he also will do the whole thing of, objection, I don't consent to being called that name. I'm surprised he didn't do it right there, right? Um, but just know that what you saw there is a taste of what went on for hours, okay? So let's go ahead and start. Hang the metal pieces on the, um, the little machine thing that comes around, they take them, they, they, the pieces go through like this little steamer type machine thing and then they paint it and then they come back around and we just take them off the hook and just put them in the box, load them up, put them back on the truck. Oh. It was four on, three off, so that was more ideal because That's a great I, I mostly have my children the back half of the week. Sure. But since, since all this, I've been having them every day. So it was like, how old are your kids? Uh, my, my son is grown, my daughter, my oldest daughter is 14, and my youngest daughter is 7. You said your son, oldest son's grown, how old is he? He's 18. Okay. They all live with you then in Milwaukee? Well, my son doesn't. Your son doesn't? My son doesn't. But. Okay. I mostly have them all throughout the week. I can't roll my eyes hard enough. And I love that he's like, how old was your son? 18. And how old was your daughter? 14. I'm like, you would have thought the man had three toddlers still in the damn bottle, right? 
I'm just like, but this is the beginning of it, okay? All the way from lying about what his work, the children, everything rolls out of his mouth as a total lie and gaslight. This is just the beginning. Mr. Brooks was indicating they were living with him. However, uh, the investigation showed that not to be the case. Uh, of the two daughters, one lives down in Georgia in the Atlanta area and the other lives in Iowa. And as old Maury Povich liked to say, our test results reveal that that was a lie, Daryl. I gotta read it, okay? Um, I know you've, had, you've heard it before, so you can't understand that. Yes, sir. Okay. You have any questions before I start for me? Only thing I want to know is, what in the heck am I being charged with anything? Well, she's making some, like I said, alleged allegations against you kind of, you know, for being physical. So that's what, you know, if that's BS, that's what I'm looking to hear from you. Okay. Total BS. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of, we couldn't track her down, so that's, that's kind of where we're at. It's this typical back and forth stuff that guys like you go through with their baby mama all the time. And they're all, you know, there's a lot of guys out there in your spot. You know, and a lot of times, you know, maybe it's it's not always fair to them, but that's kind of what I, I wish they had a law to where people can, if you do that shit, you should get in trouble. Sure. Yeah. Like, why? You shouldn't be able to just be like, oh, I'm pissed off, so I'm going to yeah. call and do this. Yep. Like, right? that's, why would you put me in that situation and then you know we're going to end up being together anyway? And that's why would you do that? Trying to judge that credibility. Yep, yeah, and that's, that's total BS. So that's why, I, I'm, that's why we're sitting in here with you to try to, to siphon through, sift through the BS, if that's what we got. And just go for it. Easy, man. Does that make now, as we will learn, you know, the cops are getting this information coming in during this interview, right? More and more evidence, that type thing. They are just buttering him up here, okay? They know that this horrible event has taken place and whatnot, but obviously they're just going in with this Erica thing at the very beginning. This is a man who just mowed down a community's parade, and he has no problem sitting here gaslighting the situation, gaslighting Erica, but this is the first that we hear, and it, this will come, become prevalent of him, what am I being charged with? And he's playing dumb, he's trying to act like, you know, uh, he doesn't know what's going on, but he's just fishing, fishing for information. He wants to know if he's being charged with a massacre that he just caused. Now, again, we've heard the testimony about how he treated Erica. For him to get up here and act like this is just drama and BS, I mean, are you kidding me? But we wouldn't expect anything less out of him. Look at what he just did to the community, and he has no problem just acting completely normal, trying to get himself out of trouble. No. What brought you to Waukesha yesterday? How did you get out here? I was meeting up with a friend to watch the Packer game. Okay. That's the only reason why I was, was out here. Where did you go to watch the game? To a friend named uh, Stephanie. A house, a bar? Or? A house. And yeah, I don't mean to make you uncomfortable or anything, but what's the address there? What's your I have on? no idea about Waukesha. I don't know the streets. What was I it don't... near? I know you had to see something near it. Uh, so what was it near? Like a gas station. Have you been to the house before? No. Never before? No. What's Stephanie's last name? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. When did you guys set this up? Um, maybe a couple of days ago. Okay. Like I said, I, I have a few friends. I have a few friends in Milwaukee that have people out here, so... It's not, I don't, like I said last night, I don't know the streets in Waukesha. It's not where I usually hang out at, so I, I couldn't say, well, this street, this street, and this, you know, I couldn't. All right. Stephanie, like a friend of yours or like a friend of a friend? A, a friend of a friend, mutual oh. friend. And what she your last like, name was? I have no idea. How long have you known her? That was my first time meeting her. Okay, so her name is Stephanie, which notice he spit that out real quick. You could tell he kind of tripped over a little bit, completely making that up in my opinion. Then doesn't know her last name, which that part, it, it, we know he's lying, right? <clears throat> that part, I'm like, okay, I can kind of get that right. Because to me, what he's trying to play off is that this is like a hookup, right? And so I'm just like, okay, he might not know her like that. You know what I'm saying? Regardless. I don't believe his story anyway. I'm not trying to give him points here. But um, then, okay, well, where'd you meet up with? Oh, at the house? Where's the house? I don't know. 
and then this is where his story will unravel but notice how quick he is to spit this stuff out right imagine being imagine erica imagine any of the people in his life and a relationship with him and you're arguing about something basic if he's able to lie under this kind of stress duress that he just committed this crime imagine what he would be able to do to try and cover up cheating lying in a relationship or something like that and how much he would gaslight the other person so again we're going to hear this whole thing unravel of how how did you get here and him knowing nothing now also serves him well to say i don't know waukesha i don't know the streets because he's trying to avoid that parade right you would not want to admit to any kind of driving around or being anywhere near a street anything like that if you did what he did so this is just par for the course for his behavior so, so how did you get the number to know the house to go to a friend a friend <laughs> so, how did you get to her house? My friend. I went with my friend. Okay, who's that? Uh, my friend. I don't really want to say his name. I don't know if that's going to incriminate him in anything. So. Okay, so let's go with this. How did you come? I know you saw Erica yesterday in Waukesha because we talked to her. Now, I don't know everything that went on, and I'm not saying I believe everything she told the other officers. How did you come? to meet with her in Waukesha, one. And two, you say you don't know Waukesha, but where did you meet her? A gas station, a park? I know you met her, where did you meet her? What what happened yesterday? Yeah, so, because if this is BS, like you say, and I know you met her, what happened? I met so her. What happened when you met her? Where did you meet her? Let's start with that. By a gas station. Okay. I don't know <laughs> what I was supposed to be getting some money from her. How did, okay. Again. You know, how did you get the house number to get there? A friend. And you can hear the kind of hesitancy. I mean, he is making this up on the fly. A friend. And who's a friend? I don't want to say. So you've never really met this Stephanie girl. You're going over there with a friend. He has the thing. You know, whoever this friend is, whatever. Then they get into, okay, look, we talked to Erica. We know y'all met how did you meet up now remember the statement he just said at the gas station because this will come back later when he says that he met her at a park or a park entrance or something like that right but again it's just so you can tell he's just making this up on the fly in my opinion right so let's keep watching for what um it was the rest of my money that she had of mine that she was holding for me okay how much um it was supposed to be three hundred and fifty dollars okay and what did she why did she have it why why was she holding well, she it she had been holding it for me for a few weeks now but like i said i hadn't seen her she had seen right my mom was she holding, why did she have it why was she holding it for you she was just holding it for me because i told her to hold it for me but this was it didn't have anything to do with this was weeks ago she had been holding the money and because i had no contact with her i couldn't tell her and my mom wasn't gonna let her come to the house to bring it. Mm -hmm. And I told her, look, man, if I'm gonna be out there, I'll meet up with you and, and get the money, but I'm not hanging out with you, I'm not having sex with you. And she was just like, oh, you wanna keep? I'm like, I'm not finna do none of that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm not supposed to be around you. I get that, I understand that, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I'm not supposed to be around you. The mysterious $350. I've heard many theories about where the money came from and whatnot, but, you know, for all intents of reasons, you know, she has this mystery money that somehow she got for him that he wanted from her, okay? So there's that. Then listen to him say, oh, that was from weeks ago. That, that was weeks ago. And, you know, I told her to hold the money. You know, that was like old stuff and we're not supposed to have any contact. And, you know, but since I was gonna be out here, I was gonna get together with you, but I'm not gonna sleep with you. I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna do that. And so it's one of these things where I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. Okay, Darrell. Um, 
again, gaslighting her into the situation. This is a tactic that he uses. We've seen him do this, right? Where if the if the kitchen gets a little too hot, he starts throwing a little gas fire over here. You know, so right now it's going to be on to Erica. He might not want them to know, A, if he's cocky enough to think, oh, I'm only in trouble for the domestic thing. You know, I don't want them to know maybe where that money really came from, if that's really true, that kind of a thing. Um... You see where I'm going with this? So he's trying to guess like that and then of course spinning it around to where he is the godlike complex, you know, look, I'm gonna get together with you to get my money, but I'm not, you know, gracing you with, you know, my body and you know, we're not gonna do all that kind of stuff. I'm just like, really, bro? Really? Okay. I love you to death, man. You my baby mama, I'm not gonna you know what I'm saying? It wasn't supposed to be like a hangout thing. I told her I'm like I'm out here, and she's like, oh, where you at, where you at, where you at? And I'm like, look, I'll meet up with you to get the money and, you know, give you a hug or whatever. But she was like, well, gee, I need something. I'm like, no, we can't do it all, all that. I'm not going to have sex with you. I'm not going to hang out with you or none of that. All right, so you told her you weren't, you weren't going to do any of that stuff. No. How did you set the meeting up? Did you, did you talk to her on the phone, Facebook Messenger, text message? Cause I'll talk to her. She, I don't think she said anything about that. So just, I mean, if she's BS, how did you, how did yeah, you get anything with her? I didn't, she, this is what she does. If well, she hold on one second. Hold on, one thing at a time. How did you set the meeting with her? How do I verify? That's what, that's what I'm saying. She, if she can't get in touch with me, that's what she'll do. She'll go to social medias and do all this and try to okay. talk to people and all this and that. I got in contact with her through a mutual friend that we both know. And I was like, okay, tell her I'm out in Waukesha or whatever. And I meet up with her to get the money. And then she put us on the call. And she was just like, where you at? Yeah. And she was just like, where you at? I'm like, look, I don't know where I'm at. Patching a damn three-way call to do this. Does he think that we're stupid, right? I'm just like, for real, like, no. Do we really think that he would be that strict about no contact or whatever? But again, look at how quick he can make this stuff up on the fly, right? But then also, as you'll see, he just, any kind of evidence that could come back to an actual conversation, anything of this nature, he will deflect it and he will backtrack on it. It's just what he does. Do you still got that money? She's like, yeah, I want to give you the money and I want to, yeah, I want to do this and do that. I'm like, no, I'm not going to I'm not gonna hang out with you. I'm going to meet up with you, get the money, give you a hug and kiss. We'll talk later. Was it still daylight? It was still daylight. daylight. It was still okay. daylight. So was after the fact. This was, I think the game was still on. Yeah, it was on. So the game was still on. Left stuff and used to go. Yep. Okay. The game was still on. So I was like, fuck it. You know what I mean? I want to see you. I ain't seen you in like a month. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to lie and say, man, that's my baby mama. I love this woman. But I can't hang out with you. I can't do anything with you, you know, that type of thing, deal, and whatever the case may be. But Typical narcissist. That's my baby mama. I love her. I do this. I'm going to be with, I want to be with you, but we can't do all this. Hits her with a car, beats her, does, I mean, just you name it, right? Yet he's going to sit here and still have that ego about everything is just turned around. You can see how he, number one, views himself, which we've seen very much in his behavior in the courtroom, but also how he like views his relationship to women, but especially one like this, who he is actually in a relationship with, because he really acts like it's like he's God's gift, right? Like he would grace her with his presence type of situation. It's just, it's so disgusting. And this is on your cell phone? The three-way call, obviously, it's your cell phone because you're not no, on phone, right? My friend's phone. Friend's phone. Yeah. But yesterday, so do you have your phone? No. That's what I'm saying. No. So who is the friend whose phone you were using to talk to her, her on a three-way call? I don't want to say his name because I don't want to... So again, notice how he very quickly, oh, it wasn't my phone, it was my friend's phone. Well, do you have your phone? No, I don't have my phone. Well, the phone was at the dude's house. It was in the grass over there with his flip-flops, whatever he had on, sandals or something like that. But again, just notice how quick he is to sit there and start covering tracks. It's spooky. Okay, I guess, so you saw her though, right? You met up with her. 
Okay. So, how did the conversation with her end? With me walking off and her being pissed off that I didn't want to hang out with her. I said, look, I'm not supposed to be around you. I'm gone. Okay. When she said, car did you use to get out? She said, I didn't didn't have a car. No, whose car did you use to get to Waukesha? My friend, my friend is the one that said he was gonna go hang out and watch the Packer game. I said, I'm gonna go with. Okay. Whose car did you use to get out to Waukesha? I didn't use anybody's car. Where does your friend live? My friend friend lives in Milwaukee. So you you didn't walk to Waukesha. Whose car did you guys use? My friend, I just said, my friend. What type of car is he? I. I mean, mine. God, he paints himself into a corner and then immediately like breaks a little bit of the corner away so he can back up a little bit. And notice how he said, a normal reaction to this, like you can understand what the cop is saying, right? How did you get to walk shop? My friend, you know, well, how did you get there? Well, whose car did you use? This would have been like a normal person that said, oh, we rode, with, we rode in my friend's car. I didn't drive my friend, something like that. But he, Daryl can't say that. He has to speak in riddles and keep gray zones people like this narcissist and whatever else he has right if you notice he always have to create gray zones okay nothing can be solid nothing can be yes or no black or white one two three a b c you know what i'm saying like it can't it has to be muddled because that's where they operate that's where they can get away with their games that they play i'm just trying to figure out how you got here yeah, I know, but it seemed like you trying to, like, spin me up or something. Like, I'm just asking how you got here. Whose car did you drive out here? Again, all they want to know is how I got here, and already he starts in, well, you're trying to, like, set me up. Why would you even say that, right? Why would you even say that? Now, we obviously know why he would, okay? Because he's just mowed down this town, okay? But in from his world, like I'm trying to even get from that perspective where I'm like, dude, why like why would you even say that? Like just answer the questions. And also, how do you think you would you would have gotten away with this? But it also shows us where I think he legitimately thought he was going to get like 25 years concurrent with all the other charges. Like he was gonna beat this in court, right? Somehow. I think he probably really thought that because I think it's evident in some of this that he thought he was going to get away with this. I didn't drive at all. <laughs> what car did you come out here in? My friend. Okay, right. What kind of car is it? So here's the thing, Darrell. Okay. Um, obviously, you know, she's coming at us. I told her she's talking about some domestic related issues, okay? Um, you know, and I don't know if she's IBS. I don't know if she's not. I'm telling you. Hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I don't want you to get... Yeah, because you know... Hold on, let me finish. You know, I don't entirely know all that, okay? I'm just right now trying to figure out how you get out here. So I got to step out with my partner for a minute. Just relax. I don't want you to get you all nervous, okay? But, you know, I'm not trying to be confrontational, but I I don't think when you meet her out in Waukesha, and you're not from Waukesha, I think a reasonable question is to ask, how did you get out here? Whether you drove, someone else drove, and if so, when you got out here, what type of car you were in? So just um, every hour or so, my boss, he knows we're out here. I just got to call him and say, yeah, we're talking. I'll call you back later. Just got to step out, throw in a line with him, and we'll come back. Just chill out here, enjoy your soda. We'll be right back. All right? Sound good? So we... Done talking or no? No, no, no. We'll we'll back come back. Just chill out. We'll be back. We just gotta make that call. That, so I just gotta make that call. That check-in call. All right. In the middle of the conversation. Well, do you want to tell me about the car? Now, notice him, because he knows how, the, you know, we know he's had brushes with the law, right? So he knows how some of these things go. Now, clearly, he's never been in this level of trouble. But look at him, like, in the middle of the conversation? Really? I mean, it's like he tells on himself, right? But again, what's the irony of it is that he doesn't see this, but oftentimes with narcissistic type people and that kind of thing, they don't realize how much they tell on themselves. And that's what also makes their behavior, number one, completely infuriating, infuriating, especially if you are being abused by them on some level um, or a victim of their behavior and whatnot, right? Uh, from a third eye perspective, it's very clear because like for this, for example, you know, we're not emotionally so to speak, involved. We're not there in the moment. 
that kind of a thing. So we can sit here and watch this and be like, this is so obvious, right? And it's frustrating, but it's almost like comical in that, you know, the fact that this dude has done this is egotistical enough to think he's going to get away with it, yet it's just dry snitching on himself to such a degree that Oh, it's just, it, it baffles me. It, I would like to think that someone else who has been through the system and this kind of a thing would know a little bit better at this level to not do some of the things that he's doing, like getting like weird with the cops and they're going to leave the room. It's just his guilt is coming through. But as we've seen, it's not a guilt of I did something morally wrong. It's a I'm going to lose my own life. I'll just go another couple minutes. Yeah, but I'm... I, I mean, just, I got to call him. I can come back, but I just... All that, listen, I'm, I'm willing to, listen, Carpenter, you've been straight up with me, you've been straight up with me, right? Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, I just want to know what I'm looking at and if I can just notify my girls. That's it. I don't have a problem with talking to you guys at all. I just want to know what am I looking at. That's I it. At the start, she called about some domestic abuse related stuff. Okay, now in this, first of all, notice how he's like, you know, I just want to know what I'm looking at. Now, this is going to be a theme. Obviously, he wants to know if he's being charged, like what happened at the parade, right? Secondly, I want to be able to contact my girls, please. That those, He is not going to, he's not worried about his children. Thirdly, listen to some of the ways that he speaks to these detectives, these two men, these two male figures, right? There is a level of respect going on here. And so then when you turn the tables and look at his performance, if you will, in the courtroom to the judge, a female uh a uh, person of um, uh, power, right? She's like this, you know, the end all. She's the head of the courtroom, right? And she's obviously female. Look at the disrespect, the talking over. Now, again, this is a completely different environment and interrogation is a totally different vibe than a courtroom. I get that. I would be very interested to see how the court proceedings went if the judge had been male. This is not to say that I'm trying to slight the judge in any way because I think she did an amazing job. It's a slight towards Darrell because I do think that all throughout this, he has this very particular way of looking at women. He just looks down on them, I think. I mean, just look at how he treats Erica, right? Look at how he talked to and treated the females in, um, in the courtroom that we saw. I mean, he had no respect for them. The judge especially, right? I mean, he's interrupting her, talking over her. He had to tell the female prosecutor she was bad at her job and this and that and blah, 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 blah. I mean, it's just, it's uncanny and it's gross. And then she makes this complaint when she gets you back. Yeah, and it's and like, why do you do this again. to me? And, and I, I promise you, I promise you, my right hand to God Almighty on the throne with Jesus next to his side. The woman is going to sit up there and say, I was drunk, I was mad, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, now I got to go through everything just for you to do that. Why did you do this to me? So you think she's going to come back to us? He is going to sit there after he did all this and portray himself as the victim. We, we already know this. We've seen him do it for weeks in the courtroom, right? It's no surprise here, but it's still shocking how someone could have done what he just did. Seeing the looks on the faces of the people, the innocent people, felt his car going over them, heard the thuds, and not be balled up in the corner needing like just to absolutely be tranquilized, number one. But number two, to be so concerned about himself with that stuff, knowing what all those things are like in his head. That's what just shocks me. Was she, yeah, what's up? What's she telling you? What's, what's going on? And she was just like, well, she said she got some money for you. And I was like, why would she tell somebody else? That's what I started thinking at first. Like, that's, like why is you think? Because she, she'll tell me the same thing. Don't tell people our business. So then when she put it in, when she merged this in, you out here, you out here, you out here. I'm like, man, yeah, but I'm like, what's up? Like, you yeah, I'm, okay, cool. You going, you going to, no, not staying out here like that. I'm watching the game and I'm gone. Again, he won't say anything that's like, you going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
he makes up just enough to get them going and then breaks off and circles it back around to himself. He's still on the story that he got the damn patched three-way call, you know, from somebody acting like he's in, in damn jail on the outside, right? Doing damn three-way calls to people who are on the street too. I mean, I'm just like, what are you talking about? I'm just like, that's probably where he got it from now, you know, to make it up. I mean, it makes sense if you're trying to get out of any accountability to, you know, a phone being traced back to you or whatever, right? But nonetheless, he's still on this story. I'm just like, dude, come on. I have license. Do you have a I do have a license, but no, no vehicle. Don't ever use your niece's, nephew's, mom's car or anything like uh, that? My nephew doesn't have a vehicle. My niece is 14. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what about your mom? No, my mom doesn't even know how to drive. She doesn't have a car, doesn't know how to drive? She doesn't know how to drive. Does she she never car? learned. Okay. Does she have a car that she lets you use at all? No. Does she have a car at all? Maybe that not that she lets you use. Does no. she have a car in her name at all? I think she did at one point. Does she right now? Not that I know of. Okay. I'm not I'm not gonna say no because I don't know. I honestly don't know. Me and my mom just now, obviously, we all know that's a lie. Her car was what he used to mow down the parade, right? Again, this is just a study and look at how he lies. Look at what he does. He doesn't want to say no to the question that he's, he knows is a lie right off the bat. So he gets a little bit wishy-washy with it. And then he's just like, I don't want to say no because I don't know for sure. How do you know, not know if your mom has a car? You know what I'm saying? It'd be one thing if you didn't live, you know, if you didn't really talk that much, if you the state's way. How... No, this, you know, yes or no, that she has a damn car. Maybe he didn't know if it was registered, but I mean, whatever, it turns out that it is, right? But again, this clip I just felt was very interesting because this is where they're starting to get down into the, you had a car, we know you had a car kind of a thing. I guess he just didn't think that cameras are a thing anymore, right? That's also what blows my mind. Let me ask you this, Darrell. So you weren't out, you weren't out in Waukesha Saturday, just Sunday. Yes, sir. right. Okay. Nothing physical yesterday. Um, like I told you, you're a part in the investigation. There's a lot of parts, right? To any investigation, there's okay. investigation people we talk about. Well, this domestic abuse thing I'm telling you about, okay. right? Okay. So wait. Hold on. Let me, oh, okay. let me go. I'm sorry. You I just had a about, question. But you talked about being a, you know, a religious man, right? I, I can do better. God. I can definitely do could. better. We all could. I'm not. We all can. No, that's why. Perfect. That's why. Yeah, yesterday was a mistake. I should have just freaking watched the game and just yeah. fucking went home, right? Because uh, that's the thing. What do What do they teach us in Christianity? Throughout that, they teach us that we're broken, right? We're sinners. Even when we're born, we're born sinners. We're broken. That's why Psalm 51, we're so 17. thankful for God's grace and forgiveness, right? When we ask for it. Um, even though we don't deserve it. But when we ask for it, he gives it. All right? You're a father. You got three children, 18, is it 18, 14, and 7? Yes, sir. All right? You got a mama that raised you well. And a God you, you believe in. Absolutely. All right? And all of them are, here's the thing they'll all want, is to tell that you're telling the absolute whole truth and nothing but the truth, right? Absolutely. So I hope you got it, right? Absolutely. Sound familiar? We've all heard that, right? Um, and I just have concerns if I fact check that Darrell's not telling me the truth. You don't have a car, so Marcus had to bring you out. You don't own a car, your mom doesn't own a car, right? So Marcus had to bring you out. So why did we find you with a car key in your pocket? It wasn't in my pocket. I don't even know where they said that was laying on the ground. That's yours. Yeah. Yours. It should have been by my ID. Yeah, it's yours. It's your car key, okay? Because it goes to a Ford Escape in your mom's name covered in Waukesha. Okay. Listen, Darrell. I'm trying to be as open and honest with you as I can be. You know, I'm Christian too, and believe me, I'm not perfect. And neither are you. And I'm not calling you a terrible man. I'm not saying you were out yesterday hunting and just let me finish. But you did not walk to that house. You did not walk to that house. You 
did not come here in a tan Kia. You didn't. Okay. No. You did not come out here in a tan Kia. Okay. You've got a key in your pocket to a car, your mom's name. Okay. And here we have it, a thud on the table of truth. Now, he's laying it all out. So you don't have a car, you don't have this, you don't have that, but, 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 well, we found a car key on you. You know, you didn't come in a tank here or whatever it was. You know, this is, here's the drill. It is going in for it. And you see, it was very quiet. He was taking in the information. He's 100% sitting there just realigning his story, right? What he can do, what pieces can I pick up? He's already messed himself up so bad here. Pretend they didn't have any of the evidence they had, right? He's already gotten caught up in so many lies. It's Really, you can't back yourself out of this. And honestly, his best bet, in my opinion, would have been at this point, am I being detained? Am I being charged with something? I want a lawyer. That's 100% what the only thing you could do in this point. But as we'll see, not Mr. Terrell. And that key works for that car. For the love of God, Marcus. For yourself, for your family, you know what happened yesterday for the people. Tell me what happened. Well, what? With the car. What am I being With your mom's people? car. You're driving goofy, people called in. You drove out of there in your mom's car, the red car. You're driving a little silly, probably because you're pissed. You met up with Erica in the car at the park. Well, initially, I believe you told us the gas station. Do I have that right? And then you changed it to the park. So that's an analysis. No, I see it. The house was by the gas station. You, when you said, you said, what was by? You said you went, Mark. and it was by a gas station. That's where you met her. No, 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 no. I said I met her at the park. Okay. At a creek. Met her, you say that. You met her at the park in your mom's car. A red Ford Escape. She got in. You talked. And what you're telling me seems pretty consistent, that there was nothing physical between the two of you. No, I did no. But you met her in the car. I didn't put my hands on her or nothing. But you met her in the car. Can, what's going on, man? Okay, so bomb has dropped, right? Now, notice a couple of things in this. When he is just hitting him with, but you met him in the car. I didn't touch her, but you met her in the car. He wants to focus in on the thing of the Erica thing when it's like, dude, we're past that. Now, remember earlier when I said, remember the gas station comment? And now you see he's trying to backtrack. He can't even keep up with his own lies. And he is going to sit here, no, no, no. I said, we met at the park. No, he didn't. He, they say, he said that they met at the gas station, but he's going to try and get slippery. And another thing that people like him do and that they thrive on is because people will see this, right? And sit here and be like, well, wait a minute, you said this. He's used to being in control, making others feel like they're crazy, like they misheard something. And oftentimes people will go along with it to keep the peace, just to, you know, or their own safety, or just to get away from being around this type of person, right? They realize this and it's like, you know, I just, you know. And so they're just, whatever they can do to get away from him, right? But this is not gonna end like that for him. You can't just do that when you've done actions like his and you're dealing with the situation that he is at this point. I see your question. Just be, you were out there just driving kind of crazy. crazy. Some yeah. people said you were driving kind of crazy. We got reports of it. You got the key, you got the car. Did you take the car or did your mom give you the car? I know you know what car I'm talking about. I just want to know. <laughs> so, so people now reported this, you know, all those okay, people no, no, out there no, 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 reported no, that no. car driving a bit erratic. I, I know what you're saying. All I'm saying is this. All I'm saying is this. We all been straight up with each other. You knew it was more to what you was asking me yesterday. Didn't know that would sure. explain. That would explain the FBI and all that, right? They're not here today. So if it's that big a deal, you don't see him here today. Come on, Kurt. Hey, we've been, we've been. You guys met in the car, in the park. We've been cool, yeah, man, right. the whole time. If I did something, yeah. if I did something yeah, wrong, that's serious, why they were here. But do you see him here today? They're not here today. Yeah, but, but y'all lied to me, man. You made it seem like they just come for no reason. Well, here's the thing, Darrell. And I'm like, what and if I, if it's today? For a minute. 
I apologize. Yeah, I can give you a clean slate. I apologize. I apologize. Because you have lied to us as well. Now this is just a, a, a window pane, a window shot, whatever you want to call it, a view into how he works and people like this work. He is 100% going to try and chastise the police officer, the investigator, the cop, whatever, for lying to him. And he's like, we've all been straight up. He's been lying this whole time. And he has the balls to sit here and try and come after the cops saying, you lied to me, you lied to me. And he's so hung up on why was the FBI here? Why was this going on? Why is this happening? It's like, he wants to know so bad what kind of trouble he's in because he knows, he knows what he did. And now he's understanding, oh wait, they have, they know about the car. He will not answer that. And we saw this in the courtroom too, where when the heat got too hot, he starts to gaslight and do all this kind of stuff because that's all people like him can do. When they're backed into a corner, that's all they can do is gaslight and try and just do this kind of behavior to get out of it. Because you came out here in the Red Ford Escape. Okay, that is what you came out here in. You had the key, all right? So what I want to do is try to give us all a chance to reset. You understand what I'm saying? Start over because you're not giving us an accurate story. You didn't ride out with Marcus in a tan car. You said your mom doesn't have a car. I've just told you, we've disproven that, all right? I don't know what kind of woman she is. I don't know what y'all been through. But you were seen in the car, driving kind of, driving kind of acting a fool, okay? In basically the same area that you've already been able to describe to me. I'm just trying to figure out how and why it happened. What made you tear out of there? What made you so mad where you're like, fuck it, and you raced on out of there? And then people call, man, this guy, is, he's driving around here kind of fast. All I want to know, like I said, y'all being cool with me. charge me anything. That's all I want to know. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Right now. I, I'm, listen. I was. You were driving a bit. So, this might be an so, no, Listen, listen. No, I don't drink. That, 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 you said that you had a couple cold ones during the game. No, nah, yeah, I, yeah. But I'm saying the hard alcohol okay. is not my thing. I was not <laughs> drunk when you get the blue. Again, the obsession with knowing if he's charged with anything. After hearing all of the stuff lined up there, he has to know. And again, like I said earlier, at this point, I would be asking the same thing if I was him. I'd be like, am I charged with something? I want a lawyer because who won it, right? I mean, it's like, you know you're not going home, okay? Like, it's a wrap. What's more shocking about this is the fact that I think he thought he had one over on them, right? In the beginning, like, I'm going to get away with this. They only know about the uh, the situation with Erica. I've just lied my way through this. And I'm just like, dude, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So your issue right now with us is you feel like you're, we're not sure. I'm getting railroaded. Okay. I know I am. No, Y'all okay. not telling me what's really going on. But we're not, we're not getting the full truth either. I know, but I, and what I was on, saying was, I had an issue. So when you left, you guys met in the car. You didn't walk there. She if got I, in the if car. I tell you everything that happened, are y'all going to be straight up with me about what I'm facing? That's all I want to know. Well, I don't want to know understand. anything else. I don't need you guys to tell me, hey, man, this is this, that is that, this is this. I just want to know. Just, just, so just, I don't really just, just, just right for the now. fact, just for the fact that, like I said, my my girls. Yeah, no, I got you. I don't know the entirety right now. So while I'm here, um, a couple of officers talked to Erica. Um, I'm not the only one working on it, so I don't know everything. I got a report to a boss, so I don't know exactly everything that's going to be yet. And that part's not a lie. I don't know exactly everything that's going to be. I'm just trying to figure out to get to that point where I can have a clear idea and call who I need to call to get some of the information to find that all out. 
I'm trying to get a clear idea of what really happened regarding you and her. And when you drove away, where you were going? Or did you not know? You know what I'm saying? Because right now, I don't know everything. Wow. Because I'm out here and, and they're out there. Oh, well, I'm sure. Right, and I'm like, how long do I got to sit in these, where, where are we at? Skigo. How long do I got to sit in these jails before I can call somebody? Get a phone call, let my, you know, let my daughters know, hey man, I don't know what's going on. But it, it's good to hear your voice, are y'all okay? Yeah, we're trying to, we're trying we're to, to get point. to that point, Darrell, but. So on this one, after all that, after he lays all this information out, and we'll hear from the cop on the stand, and he does say, you know what, yeah, we were, other people were bringing other information, and now clearly they know some bad stuff went down, right? But they're getting all the intel in as they're going through this, right? After all this, he just has to sit here and say, how long do I have to sit here before I can make a call? I mean, I'm just like, are you kidding me? You know, it's that, that ambivalence toward the situation that just I think for anyone that has any kind of heart any kind of conscience it's just like Ugh, this is awful the question I asked you when you left where were you go did you know or did you not know were you just mad and you left where were you going when you initially drove off that's an easy if you didn't know where the hell you were going or you didn't have an idea or you didn't have a particular destination in mind you know, so be it We've been talking a couple hours. You want to sit and eat a minute? I wish they had some Tylenol. I've been trying to fight this pain, man, since... They might, I don't know. They show... I, I, I don't actually, know how. Did you ask them? Yes. So they don't? They just said they'll see. Okay. And we'll see. So again, things are getting heated up. This is, he knows he's in trouble, right? I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist at this point. So notice, what does he do? He gaslights the shoulder. Oh, I need Tylenol, I need this. He's trying to buy time. He's trying to align himself as a victim. And as we'll see what he does when he does get some time alone in the room, his shoulder is not hurting. It's just what he knows to do. It hurt worse now than he did yesterday, or last night rather. Yeah, it's gonna be sore. It's definitely sore. There's no doubt about that. Oh my God. We'll take a break and see if we, uh, we can round up some time on what I mean. Yeah, we can see if we can. How about we see if we want me to see if I can find some? Yeah, I just wanted to. Let me see if I can find some. It's so many things going through my mind right now. The pain, the. You I'm don't not know. Even, I didn't even know she called the, the word. She didn't call like the cops or. Yeah, someone else did. I know you said you, you lost your phone. Or you didn't yeah. know where, where it went dead and now you don't know where it is. If we find it so we know it's yours, can get it back to you? I know you said it's cracked, but... No, well, it, it, the screen out. is cracked, but it has a... Uh, I don't what's think the, it went all the way to the what's glass. The post, so we know it's yours and if we can turn um, it. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't have a number code. It has... You have to... Can you draw it? Do it with, with that. Can you draw it? It's dead. It's not even gonna turn off. Well, <laughs> yeah, but we don't want to give it to somebody else. It. We don't want to give it to somebody else. Are you able to, it's like it's a seven. It's typically it's six. the phone. The phone is dead. So, but like I said, we can charge it. I don't want somebody else to say, "Oh, that's my phone." Even though we're giving your property to somebody else. Wait a minute, you know I mean? so that sounds like y'all got my phone. If we find it. I didn't say we had it, I said if we find it. This is seven. Alright, so in that direction? Okay. Alright, so this way down? Okay. No, I don't know if they have it now, but if we find it, you don't have it, so it I would think be in somewhere in the area of that house. Wait a minute, y'all sound like you have my phone. I mean, come on. Now again, notice he's trying to cover all bases. It's cracked, it's dead, it's this, it's that. Just stall him. But then he sits here and says, oh, it's a seven. Now who knows if that's really the, the code to swipe or whatever. But remember earlier, it was, oh, I don't have a phone. You know, and then it's like, eh, well, actually, you kind of do. You know, <laughs> this is not really how it goes. You, you really do, Darrell. For me to look 
forward to, but it's like <laughs> this woman, man, and I love her to death, man. I want her to be my wife, man, but I just wish somebody could tell her that. Like, <laughs> I wish somebody could really tell her, like, man, this dude loves you, man. Why are you doing this to this guy, man? He literally wants to marry you. 16 years, man, off and on. I'm not gonna go mess with nobody else, man. That That's the person that I want to be with, but I'm not gonna continue to be the scapegoat because you want to drink. And, and when you know I don't, be, you making it seem like I just beat up on you. Like I'm just like you're a punching bag or something. I don't wake up and be like, oh, bitch, I'm gonna hit you. Or I'm gonna hit you. Like, what? I mean, li listen to what he's even saying. I wish someone could tell her that I love her. You know, here's the whole thing. I think, you know, uh, like any relationship, when they first met, there probably was something there, whether it was just purely a physical thing or who knows what. But she has moved on, honey. You know, and I think that's a huge part of what incited this anger, this rage in him. And as the judge said in her sentencing, he operates off of rage, right? And I think his realization that he has lost control over her is what ignited this, right? Because she's got a support group. She's, you know, she's extracting herself, at least it seems, from his abuse on multiple levels, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, all of the above, right? And so for him to sit here and go into this, again, it's just another gaslighting thing. And to even sit here and say, well, she acts like I wake up talking like I want to hit her. And I was waiting for her to say, well, she has to give me a reason first, because that's 100%. I think his logic. It's like almost like I'm demonized here. Like, I'm not even saying you're a demon. No, not you. Not, not, not your opinion, but it's just it. I feel that way because you're trying to trying to guess. Ah, I, I know you heard that. Oh my god. Uh. Oh, that fucking hurt. Sure. I know you heard that. I heard it. Let me check. We're gonna go check with them. Maybe they'll listen to us a little bit better. Fuck. Want to check? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, give us a minute. Ah. Uh, see what we got. Dude, they, it gotta, how, how, it gotta be something wrong, man. How in the hell does it, sometimes sprains will pop too. Yeah, yeah but why is it hurting like this and they say there's nothing, dude. Because sprains can actually be more painful than a break. Yeah. So whatever they got, whatever they did, it, it hurt so bad. Mm -hmm. Wanna keep the food, why don't you keep the food in the soda and we'll be back in the key. God. Got that silent off. We'll be right with you. Oh, man. This is just if I, okay. If they had this kind of evidence on me, just that, nothing else, I would have been like, "What's your offer? What's the plea deal?" There's no way I can talk my way out of this, right? But not him. He's gonna take it to trial with this BS on video. He doesn't even wait five seconds before he goes through their paper and then he tries to use the phone. <laughs> I'm sorry. Y'all, this is absolutely insane. 
What? Who is he gonna call? Why? I mean, I have so many questions. Okay, first of all, the shoulder thing. He's clearly trying to make it look, oh, the cops sent me when they did their whatever. Then they leave, immediately looks at the paperwork. We all would want to know what's on the damn paper. I get it, okay? I mean, I get it. Then he goes for the phone. And I'm like, you know this is on video. And then other than that, you're at the police station, okay? <laughs> like, who are you going to call? I, my first thing would be, you know it's going to be recorded or something or someone's listening. And of course they came right back in because whoever's watching this was probably like, he's using the phone, he's using the phone, go in there. You know, and then right away, oh man, oh my shoulder, get out of here. So this is one thing between me and you, man. What if it wasn't me driving? What if it wasn't you? What if it was my mom's truck? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't driving. Mm -hmm. What if it was you? What if it wasn't me? Mm -hmm. Who else would it be? That's what I'm. That's what I'm asking. Not not asking you who else would it be. Right. I'm just asking. What if I knew? Mm -hmm. Would I be asked to give that information? Well, like I said, we're here to gather truth. So if somebody else was driving that car, yeah, I would want to know who that car is so we can go talk to that person. But a huge part of that is going to be your honesty with it. Right, right, right. Now I was just asking because you just ask. You know, you know, you you've already figured out you're not a, you're not an idiot. You're not a dumb man. You're a smart guy. Right. I I see that. You know that we've been working on this. What if it wasn't me driving? What if it was? What if it wasn't? I'm just like, oh my God, he's asking the cop to help him come up with alternative theories as to how he can get out of the trouble that he's in. Okay. It's hurtful. So you, you brought that up where you don't want to see anybody where their nose. I'll show you in a minute. Oh, okay. You don't want to um, see anybody get hurt. Or sorry, you don't want to see yeah, anybody he, get charge for something they didn't do. But you already brought up, too, that if somebody did something, that they should be held accountable for it. And that you're willing to accept responsibility. What's going on with if it's Can I show you something? You look like you kind of failed me or something. No, no, I'm not filming. Are hey, you? That's you? No, I ain't got no, um, it looked like whoever. It look like gray. Right there. I can see your face. No, that's not me. That's not you. That's not me. That's not you. No, I don't want to. Durrell. That's a Durrell. Hey, <laughs> that's you. That's you, Durrell. Why you say it like that, man? Because we talked about the honesty piece. You keep telling me that you, you, tell, you tell the truth when you did do something. You take responsibility. When you do do something. There's your mom's car again. There's your mama car, mom's car again. Next to a child, which I know you care a lot about, children. Next to a child, from someone yeah. later. Uh -huh. Now this part is really eerie because we're seeing the hard evidence. Darrell, this is you. This is you. Here's the picture. He's totally quiet. And he says, here's your car next to a child. We know you care about children, which I don't think he cares about anybody but himself. But obviously they're going to say this stuff in the interview to get him to confess or whatever. Uh, and he's like, oh, that's a child right there. I mean, it's just... I can't imagine. I, I don't even know what was going through the officer's mind at this point when they're having to look at these images and this video, which he's about to show them, or uh, show Drell of him barreling through this parade. It's your mom's car. 
Yeah, I was just asking him about my, um, about that's your mom's car that. that we took the key for from you. So you can't tell me at this point I'm playing any games anymore. You know, I didn't. I didn't uh, say you was playing games from the get go. Well, you felt just like last, being totally no, straight. last night I felt like it wasn't the, as, it wasn't you know, as fluid as you wanted. No, it wasn't the flu. It was just and it wasn't I as knew, much as I wanted. Either. I knew that y'all knew more than what y'all was saying, and I felt like last night. With that whole, you know, them coming in the way they did, and because I'm sitting there in the thing and I'm watching them walk past, like, what in the hell? And seeing that, I just felt like, okay, y'all already know wh what y'all want to do, which y'all, you know what I'm saying? Y'all just want, I didn't know what y'all want. It just seemed like y'all knew more than what y'all was going to tell me. It was more so like a, I felt like I was being railroaded to be like, okay, tell me this. But we already know over here what we gonna do. He's so absolutely only concerned with himself that only this logic makes sense to him. He's like upset that they wouldn't tell him they already knew all this stuff going on, right? You know, and it's just like, it, it just baffles me as to how it, uh, someone like this can't see that. It's just, it's shocking to me that he can't see his own BS. We already know what we're going to do right here we just want you to tell them yourself and say you did this and did that so we can already justify what we already want to do it it's like i don't feel like that's fair what time did you come out here with the car what time did you head out from milwaukee to Waukesha? i don't want to talk man i don't want to talk if, if i'm not getting no i'm not getting nothing i just showed you three pictures okay man. you showed me pictures but you're not telling me what i'm facing you know what you're facing i don't that's the hope you that's drove why down I keep a asking. You, don't, you drove down a parade route you got a pretty good idea what you're facing. You see what I'm saying? So now this is more stuff coming out, man. Yep. We, were, we told you we were looking for that explanation. And that's you. Uh, and all I'm saying is, look, video. all somebody got to do is just tell me what I'm facing. I'll tell you guys whatever you want to know. Okay, there it I is. said that three, four there times. It there it is. And it's like, yo. So, Darrell, what were you thinking when you went driving, driving through this parade? What am I facing? That's all I want to know. I don't have no yeah. problem talking with you, you guys. People, you got people injured that had to go to the hospital. So they're saying I I injured somebody, or you're saying I you injured did. somebody. Yeah. So I'm looking at what, hurt. reckless endangerment? The very least, yeah. The very least. People got hurt. That's reckless endangerment. I don't know exactly what they're going to classify it. Yeah, people had legs broken. Endangerment's where you may have hurt somebody by your actions. You did hurt somebody by your actions. So what am I being charged with? That's what I'm trying to say. I don't say. know exactly yet. You're still working that out. That's I don't know all about. of the details. You're not going to get that out of me. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm explaining to you. You're driving down there. You're, you're looking at people got hurt. People got some broken legs. And y'all saying that's me. I know that's you. That's How you know that's you? Because I can recognize you. I can tell it's you. Yeah. And that's your mom's car. Which you had the key for. I can ID you already starting to lie that's not me that's not me now also notice the cops are kind of slightly giving him a little more here people got hurt legs broken had to go to the hospital reckless endangerment is the least you're looking at i mean 76 charges later right major lives lost all sorts of things what gets me again is that the fact that he still is trying to morally make it look like the cops are wrong. Well, I'm not going to talk if you didn't tell me. See, more's coming out now. More's coming out now. And he wants to make it out like he's being upfront with them, but it's like you're you're you know what you did, right? I mean, just like they said, like what do you think you're facing? You just mowed down a parade. I mean, are are you crazy? Like, yeah, you're not going home, dude. Darrell, I'm just asking you to be honest about it about what I'm facing. What do you I, think I, you're I, facing? I don't know. What do you think you're facing? What do you think hypothetically? I mean, you've been through this gamut before. Right. And y'all knew I was getting charged with this from day one, so why y'all couldn't just charge me and take me to county jail where y'all was going to take me, man? We because wanted that, yes, you wanted me to tell on myself. That's that, basically what y'all yes, wanted me to do. You told us that there was reasons for everything. No, I'm saying, but... And I'm not you trying to... Because y'all still, I'm not tripping with y'all because y'all being straight up so i'm not i'm not but i'm saying come on dude if y'all knew this already why y'all just didn't take me to why y'all just didn't do what y'all had to do 
here's here's where you're at right now. And it's like you take me through the runway to get get me to do something that y'all already. Can I speak? Here's where you're at. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you straight. Here's where you're at. One of two people did this, and I mean that from a human perspective. There's the God-fearing Christian who loves his kids and his mom that you say you are, and I want to believe you are, and in many ways you've presented yourself as, who went out, got in a fight with his girl, argument, whatever you want to call it, and went and, and just done screwed up. Or there's the malicious guy, the malicious guy who, who who's lied to me about his love for God, who's lied to me about his love for his mother, who's lied to me about his love don't, for don't his spin children. It, don't spin it, man. It's one of those two people, man. It's, I'm just saying, don't what spin is it. it then? Don't spin it, man, because I'm not... Which one are you? I'm not going to spin it, dude. Which guy are you? I'm the God-fearing guy that you've been talking to since last night, then man. Tell me the truth about And you know that. And that you road. know that. Then tell and me you know the truth that. about driving down there. Tell road. me what I'm facing. Man, my God. I can't roll my eyes hard enough at it, right? Don't spin it. Don't spin it. I'm the God for your man. Of course, he's going to lie about everything he can. We've already seen this. Now, another thing, like, if even if I were him at this point, and, and we get we get what he's trying to say here. Well, why don't you just take me and book me and do all this? Well, of course, they want to get information from you, right? I mean, that's what the cops do, right? Okay, you should know this. Secondly, he's sitting here. He doesn't know if he killed people. I mean, this has to be on his mind. Like, did I kill anybody? Like, you know what I mean? But like, you you would have to be wondering, you know, okay, if I killed someone, I know I ain't going home, right? He doesn't know this. He just mowed down a bunch of people, right? Out of this pure rage. And now it's almost like he's come to, if you will. And he's like, oh great, now I have to pay for my actions. What were they? Just told you some of what you're facing. Some. Reckless endangerment. That's almost like saying I killed somebody. No, you want me to give you the entire case without you don't, giving you don't anything, have to. and I'm no, not, not going to do that. That's not what I'm, I'm asking. You. That. That's not what I'm asking. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I talk to you about perspective? I'm not. Remember when I talk to you about see. perspective? True somewhere in the middle, all that? Yeah. Yep. That's how yep. I see what you're, you're saying. Asking you got me doing all this and that, but y'all sit up here and come in here. We're not, I'm not blaming it on you guys. I'm not. But y'all sit up here and here. The police do this every single time. Even when you try to be, look, Show me you, try, guy you, try to, you try to be straight up with them, you try to tell them the truth, you try to do all this and that, and they still railroad you not every to tell me the single truth. time. You're not trying to tell me the truth. It, it, not it's anymore. Not, it's not even, no, it, it don't got nothing to do with that, because I just told you, I don't have a problem with telling you everything you want to know. I just wanted to have an idea. I, know. I just wanted to have an idea. That's all I said last night. You know what I want to know. And, I, know and that's all happens. I said today. And you know what happens. So okay, what am I being charged with? What are y'all going to charge me? What are y'all going to recommend? What are y'all going to do? Because at the end of the day, I'm still, I'm still, this is why I feel the way I feel. Oh. Now, again. He's sitting here gaslighting the hell out of them. He just wants to know what he's going to be charged with. He said, I'll tell you everything you want to know. Well, why didn't you from the very beginning then, right? Of course, he wants to change his story around. I mean, this is just common sense, right? To fit the narrative. And he wants to know at this point, did I kill people, right? Did I kill people? He legit thought he got away with mowing the parade down. Now this much is obviously not true. He wants to know what the cops are going to say. And this cat and mouse game with the whole thing, just it, it's fascinating to me but so frustrating i can't imagine being a detective and doing this because i i don't have the patience that these people have to be able to put up with this bs like you don't i mean it's acting like you don't know what these are and, and you, you know you making it seem like i don't care like i'm just this heartless type of person dude well if i could be okay that's fine but look at my position I've been in here for 24 hours. I haven't even t- gotten a shower, good sleep. My shoulders fucked up. I haven't even got a phone call to even notify anybody, talk to my family whatsoever, not one time. And to think as he's talking, there's people in the hospital with their family members who will never get to speak to them again because he took their life. And he's concerned about a phone call and his shoulder and some Tylenol. Got it. We talked about if the roles were reversed, what you'd want my partner, Ben, yes. to do. Yeah, you did say that. We talked about that. What would you want it to do if it was your kid with 
the broken leg. And look, so a I want to believe a lot of people did. A lot of people got hurt. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. They really were there. No, I'm saying a lot of people got hurt. Yeah, there's people hurt, man. Like that? Broken legs and stuff like I told you. Concussions hit their head. Yeah, I wouldn't want to see that happen to nobody, dude. I don't believe you would either. Yeah, yeah, but you and I'm just not like, saying it's on purpose. <laughs> you just thought, you just thought, yo, this dude is heartless. So now the reality is coming down. Kids got hurt. Yeah, lots of people. Concussions, broken legs. You can hear the the life drain from it. Really? Well, I wouldn't want to see that to happen to anyone. You you thought I was heartless. Yeah, we do. Y'all know if I did not talk to that woman, I would never, ever be sitting right here talking to y'all right now. Again, it's Erica's fault. It's a woman's fault. I wouldn't have done this if it hadn't been for that. Seriously, dude? You didn't have to put the picture down. You didn't have to. The stroller. That's a stroller? Yeah. So a kid got hurt? Yeah. A kid? Yeah. Bad. You said a lot of people got, got hurt. checked out? Yeah. A lot of people got hurt. To me, it's a pretty good injury if the doctor's got to check you out or you got a broken leg yeah so what do you call my shoulder <laughs> i'm just making a joke but i mean that right there is right in line with what's the plea deal he just showed you a mangled stroller and told you a kid's got hurt confirmed it and you want to talk about your shoulder and laugh about it i'm just making a joke oh my god what are the charges We're incriminating stuff. I'm already like I'm about to lose my life, man. Can I ask a quick question? Hold on, watch it. I know. Why do you Just want watch me to watch it? it? Because I'll show you. I just want you to watch it. Watch it. Why though? Watch it for me. Why though? Because I want you to see what's in the video. Did you watch it? No. Will you? I just want to know why you want me to watch it. Because I want you to see what's on the video. Why don't you want to watch it? I just want to know why you want me to watch it. I didn't say I just want you to I see what I told I you. Problem. You're not accepting the answer. I told you I want you to see what's in it. That's why I want you to watch it. You wanted information from us for sure. I want you to watch it and see what's in it. Yeah, it's a good point. It's information sharing. Now again, exactly like they said, they're giving him what he wants, but he doesn't want to see what he did. Now, the video part is cheering because you can hear people screaming for their children. You can hear the fear and the absolute horror that was going on during this. Of course, he doesn't want to see what he did. And of course, he doesn't want to see the blatant evidence of him mowing these people down, right? And the carnage that he left behind. Also notice how it's like a five-year-old going back and forth. Why don't you want, why do you want me to watch it? Why don't you want to watch it? Well, why don't you want me? I mean, this is where I'm like, I don't have patience, so I couldn't do this job right at all like at all my hat goes off to him so you okay. think it's important so you see what happened you say you told you me what happened you. you already told me what happened girl y'all told me what happened i understand my life is over i'm trying to come to grips with that mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm trying to come to grips with the fact that this is how my story ends from trying to love somebody i never see my kids again my mom my relationship is gone for me and it's like what is it? What is it to look at? And more my life is for me to look at my life in. That's you, Darrell. Is it? Is it looking at my life ending? These are the same for them. I'm just telling you that. Okay. I think it's important you see these. It's important for me to see my life in. It is important for you to see them. And if this doesn't sum this monster up, he is only concerned about his life ending, coming to grips with his relationships over, his life's over, while a video is playing of him taking the lives of countless people and harming dozens others. 
This, my friends, is an actual monster who has been walking amongst us, but no longer is, thank God. Now, if you want to hear what I have to say about his sentencing and watch all those clips with me, go ahead and click the video that's playing right now.